What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, we're going to be testing out Wonder Studio by Wonder Dynamics a third time as they have added some new features that if they work correctly, are going to increase how useful this software is in streamlining character visual effect shots. For those of you who don't know, Wonder Studio is an AI tool that automatically animates, lights, and composes CG characters into a live action scene. It creates some motion capture data for a live action character that you have shot and composes a CG character of your choice on their website and composites that with automatic lighting into your live action shot. Now in the previous two videos we made on this topic, we noticed that this process is not flawless. In my opinion, it has a lot of things that need to be ironed out before it's used in a more professional workflow. However, it's still an interesting technology that hopefully will be even better in the future. This is the Wonder Studio website. As you can see, it is a visual effects studio in your browser. Now, you're gonna do a lot of the automated process in your browser if you get this. However, once Wonder Studio spits out these scene files that it has created for you, you can still edit those and make them more of your own. So if we just scroll down here, we can see this is their promo page. They're showing it in its best light. You can even upload your own CG character model. And here we have kind of the general breakdown. You shoot your live action character, and then when you import it into this software within your browser, it will recreate that motion capture data and create a rig based on that data, and then import a CG character, lighting it in a way that fits your scene. So it's a pretty interesting technology, and it also creates various passes that you can use as a visual effects compositor to adjust things in your own compositing process as well. So as you can see here, we have our motion capture data, our character pass, which is just our CG beauty pass. We have an alpha mask here, which can be used for uh, rotoscoping and things like this. And we have our clean plate, which is okay in some sequences, however, needs a lot of work. And a lot of the time, in my opinion, you would just be better off creating your own clean plate from scratch using traditional visual effects techniques, like camera projection, for instance. And then one of the new features that Wonder Dynamics has introduced is the camera tracking aspect of things, which we're going to test out in this video. Having the camera tracking data means that when you download your 3D scene export file, your CG character will move in 3D space and not just frame space. So before when we exported these scenes from Wonder Dynamics, the 3D camera in your scene would be static and only the 3D character would move in frame space, which means it's hard to add other CG elements that you want in the post-production process without doing your own 3D camera track inside of that third-party software. You can see here the new system that they have added here. It actually adds our CG character, but in addition to that, it's tracking our camera so that it moves around in accordance to the live action shot within the 3D world. So that's what we're going to be testing out today, guys. As I mentioned before, there's some pretty intense claims on this website. I am skeptical of anything that claims to be sort of a one-step solution, but I think the technology is very interesting and in the future is going to get much better. So I'll just kind of speed through the website here. You can have multiple characters in your scene that you can create the CG counterparts of. And yeah, obviously it's going to create nice lighting on your character, which is not always perfect, but in the shots that I've worked on is pretty decent. And yeah, as you can see here, we have a little before and after. It's uh, pretty interesting how the uh, CG counterparts are looking in these live action footage. So anyways, guys, let's get started testing Wonder Studio with its new 3D camera tracking update. We're going to be trying out our camera tracking and character on this shot I have downloaded from ArtGrid. It's just a shot of this jogger running and we have a fair bit of parallax here in the foreground. And this would be a fairly simple 3D camera track inside of Blender if we wanted to do this in a more traditional way. So I think it's a good way to test out Wonder Studio's camera tracking to see how it compares to something that we could do manually. So I'll go ahead and close this here and we'll start a new project inside of Wonder Studio. So I'll go ahead and click on create new project and I have the basic version of Wonder Studio so I can't access some of the advanced options but I have the basic version just so you guys are aware of my subscription. So I'll go ahead and click on continue here. We'll do live action easy and the first thing we're going to do is upload our video footage to our project. So we just have it right here. I'll just drag it into our browser here and let it upload and that we have our clip loaded into our browser, we can drag it into our timeline. And you can see we can scroll through our timeline and see our character at different moments of it. Now the next thing we want to do is tell the software where our main character is. So we can go to next and we can click on this button right here that says scan frame for actors. So it'll automatically do this for us. So click that. And as you can see, just like that, it has found our character in the scene. And we can select him and open up the side window to choose a character that we want to replace him with in our CG version. And I'll just use the professor character right here. Go ahead and select this and click on assign. And as you can see here, we have our actor one as the professor. And of course, if you had more actors in your scene, you could assign different CG characters to those actors. And so now we can click on next. 
And now we have a few different settings to choose from for exporting our data passes. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep resolution at 720p and I'll use an MP4 format. And then we can choose a variety of different ways to export our data. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to export the Blender scene and the Blender scene will contain our camera tracking data. So I'm actually not going to export our camera track separately, but if you want to import that camera tracking data to another software, you can definitely select this as well. But this should be just fine. I'll just export the clean plate and the blender scene, and this should be just fine for the sake of our example. And I'll click on start processing. And now we'll just give Wonder Dynamics approximately 41 minutes to automate this whole process for us and export a CG character, as well as that point cloud and 3D tracking data within our blender scene. All right, so we are back and Wonder Studio has completed our project here. So we'll go ahead and select our project and take a look at the composite that it has created for us. So as you can see here, play through our scene and see our CG character, the professor, running in the same way as our live action character was initially. So pretty nice compositing here. The lighting looks really good. As you can see here, in my opinion, the biggest issue with Wonder Studio is likely the clean plate creation. You can see just around the outside of our CG character, the clean plate, is very blurry and it doesn't always stitch together very well. Essentially, it's kind of a Photoshop generative fill, except it has to interpolate from frame to frame. At least that's how I think it works. And because of that, it's just hard to gather that data necessary to recreate that clean plate. So we'll take a look at the clean plate separately here in a second, but you can see just from zooming in here, that's one of the biggest issues is just the kind of blurriness of the clean plate around our character because it's trying to remove our initial live action character from the scene before overlaying our CG one. But as far as the, you know, the jog looks good, our character is nicely composited on top of our scene. Now, obviously it's not taking care of our reflections. You know, you actually still see the reflection of the jogger in this uh, kind of water here on the ground. But overall, pretty, uh, pretty cool for an automated process. There's some contact issues with the feet on the ground, but still pretty interesting. And uh, you know, the track actually looks pretty good, but when we open up in Blender, we'll take a look a little bit more closely. Uh, pretty impressive for a one-stop solution, obviously not production level, but again, like I said in the last video, for something like social media, where it's kind of fun for creators to create some CG characters for skits or something, this could work really well. All right, so now we're going to export a few passes here and take a look at them inside of Blender. So I'll go ahead and we'll export our Blender scene and then I'll also export our clean plate here. It's going to have a zip file that we can download and we'll call this the professor. And then I'll go ahead and unzip that file. And now you can see we have two different files in here. We have our blend file and a readme. And now we'll also export our clean plate here so we can take a look at that separately. I'll save that in the same folder as the professor and then we'll also open this up. So I don't think they've made any advancement in their clean plate system just from this video itself, but we'll take a look at it inside of After Effects just to try it out real quick. So I'll go ahead and close our browser there and we'll open up After Effects and we'll go to File, Import, File, and we will find our image sequence of our clean plate. So go to the clean plates folder, select the first image of that sequence, go ahead and open this up and we'll drag this into a new composition to take a look. And you can see that, like I mentioned, the clean plate isn't really that clean. You can just see this blurry kind of like invisible man character uh, running. Also, we have a reflection here in the background, which I wouldn't expect it to take care of, but just something to note. You can see even the feet aren't being cleaned up very well. The algorithm is not perfect yet. But you know, if the CG character is scaled over the clean plate, you don't have to deal with that at all. But as far as an actual usable clean plate, this is not going to work in a professional setting, but uh, still pretty cool technology. If you're rendering out maybe in a low resolution, you might be able to get away with something, but uh, better just to create a actual clean plate from scratch using manual techniques. So that's our clean plate. Now let's take a look at the Blender file and see how well Wonder Studio has tracked our footage and created that point cloud data for us. Go ahead and close our After Effects project here and let's open up Blender. So I'll go ahead and navigate to our folder here and open up the Blend file. Let's take a look. And interesting, now we have this point cloud, which is quite interesting. Fortunately, it looks like our character is behind the uh, point cloud data at the very beginning of our sequence. But uh, let's take a look at our camera move just from an external perspective. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at our collections actually first here. So we have a few different collections. We have our cameras collection, which it has created for us, which contains our camera, as you can see on the left here. Then we have our object collection, which contains our character. And our character has a rig on it. If we zoom in here, you can see our character has a fairly nice rig on it that you can adjust the animation with if you want. 
and also you have the rest of the rig here at the origin point of our scene and uh, yeah after the objects collection we have some lights in our scene looks like we have a sun in our scene that it has created for us based on the live action shot and then in addition to this it's also created an hdri that has sort of a gradient based on the lighting in our live action shot so it's not really an hdri it's just an environment gradient but it's just generating this data and using that as a dome around our character to create some ambience on him to help that render blend into the scene a bit better then finally we have our environment collection here and that's where all of our point cloud data is we have two objects in our environment collection here we have our point cloud mesh which as you can see here if we go into rendered view we can actually see kind of a projection of the environment in the live action shot on these points in our scene so it's just created a mesh with pixel data from the live action shot and tried to put these points in 3d space based on how it thinks the 3d environment in the live action shot is so it's just gathering that pixel data and using it in a 3d context here and with enough of a point cloud you could use this to light your subject as well however i don't think this is going to be enough for really anything super useful right now uh, especially since our character is behind some of this point cloud data but still it has a general recreation so it does uh, create something for us which is nice to have to get a general idea of where the 3d environment is in 3d space however it's just not super accurate right now just because of this back portion here so it's created that point cloud for us and it's also created our camera tracking data with all these null objects so again theoretically if this all lines up to the 3d geometry in our scene we can use this to add you know other cg objects into our scene as well you know if we want to reconstruct something or add some uh, barriers in the street we can do that and we can place other cg objects in our scene because if we select our camera here it's actually moving through 3d space in accordance to how the live action camera was moving so if we take a look through the camera we can see that our shot is tracked now we don't have the background movie image. We have to import that into our scene. But you can see our CG character and some points are moving along the ground here. It looks like an okay track. I do see some jittering here. So let's take a look with our footage in the background here. So I'll just select our camera. Then we'll go to background images. We'll select movie clip and open up our live action shot that we have used initially. This one right here. Open this up. And now you can see our camera track in its entirety. And actually, you probably notice that this track isn't really that accurate. You can see some slipping here on our CG object that we have added to the scene. Our CG character is lined up okay, but mostly that's working because the clean plate in the background hides him. So all in all, you can see this slipping here of the tracking data. So I'm not super impressed with this track. I felt like we gave Wonder Studio a fairly easy shot to accomplish, but it's a lot of there's a lot of slipping going on here. So essentially, we'd have to recreate the tracking data from scratch in order to actually add our you know barrier here or whatever CG elements that we want to add in addition to the CG character they have created for us. Because without an accurate 3D track, even though our CG character might line up with the live action character, the rest of the 3D environment we create around it is not going to line up because there's just so much slipping in this tracking data. If you look at the floor here, you know, you can get the general idea, but I guess the easiest way to see it is by placing our cube as the floor. And you can see it kind of shakes around, even though the camera's not really shaking. So not the most impressive 3D track. I thought I gave it a pretty easy one, but we could definitely do this much better just with traditional 3D tracking tools. Let's go ahead and take a look at our character 3D model and see how it's lit in the scene. I'll go ahead and go to uh, the end frame here. One thing you'll notice if you try out Wonder Studio is that the textures don't automatically come linked in the scene. It'll actually be unlinked at first. And all you have to do to solve that is, as you can see from the readme that they have created, go to this link here to download the textures, and then we can relink those. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. We can find the professor's textures.zip file and download this, save it here. And you can see they have all the different character textures for us. I'm not sure why they don't just zip that in the file altogether. Um, like they have with the point cloud, but that's how they've done it. So we'll work with it. We'll unzip our textures. And now that we have that data, we can just go to file, external data, and then find missing files. And we can select this, 
textures folder and click on find missing files and it should relink everything for us so if we go to rendered view now you can see that now we have our character fully textured and ready to go and yeah one thing that wonder studio has definitely excelled at is the lighting of the cg character pretty good motion capture data as well except where the feet hit the ground but um, as far as the black levels and the compositing goes i'm pretty impressed with a automated result like this there are things that it's hard to replicate you can see he's kind of like floating at the end of our scene here because it doesn't have that leg data to work with but when the character is running it looks pretty decent here it's lined up fairly nicely and actually the lighting looks pretty nice as well so it is a nice start again i don't think it's ready for a professional environment yet overall guys i like the way wonder studio has automated some of the lighting process for very simple shots like this the motion capture process is pretty good for basic movements like walking and jogging and things like this i'm not super impressed with the claim of a 3d camera track it does technically track the footage but as you saw in this video it was a fairly simple camera move and it didn't track it with the best accuracy the clean plate is not to a professional level either so in essence guys with all these things taken into consideration it's a really cool technology but since it's not super accurate it'd be hard to build more upon this 3d world especially without the accurate camera track I'll be testing this out more as Wonder Studio continues to progress I still think it's a very interesting and powerful technology it's just not quite there yet for me anyways guys that is it for this video I hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let us know what you like to learn next on the channel subscribe for more visual effects and filmmaking content and I'll see you next time